And while the Iron Curtain crumbles, its most famous symbol, the Berlin Wall, stands as a useless monument tonight to the Cold War. People died trying to cross that wall, but now Germans living in the East and West can pass through it with no problems. Berlin after the wall is a very different place. Our night team reporter Steve Kraft concludes his special assignment with a tour of this Cold War relic. Why did it fall? A couple of reasons. First, because the Soviet Union let go of its Eastern European satellite states and because the tired, corrupt East German regime of Erich Honecker was ready to be toppled. For the wall, it was the end of an era. The wall went up in 1961. At the time, the East German government said it had to be built to keep out the poisonous influence of the West. But to Western eyes, the wall was there only to keep East Germans from leaving. It gave this view to many a kitchen window in East Berlin. The wall sliced through neighborhoods, sliced through families, and sliced through lives. Many made dramatic escapes, jumping over it, tunneling under it. More than 70 people didn't make it. Throughout its life, the wall has been part political statement, part killing field, and part tourist attraction. Last month, November 9th, it suddenly lost its brutal power. Now, day and night, Berlin is filled with the sound of people taking it down bit by bit. I am Lisa Dad. I got some wall. I got tons of wall. <laughs> In his poem, Mending Wall, Robert Frost wrote, Before I'd build a wall, I'd ask to know what I was walling in or walling out, and to whom I was like to give offense. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that wants it down. I'd like to thank photographer and editor Neil Miller for his great work on this special assignment and also translated Stefan Schott and Miriam Peet. Great. It's been a great series, and you and Neil deserve a lot of credit. Thank Thanks. you, Steve.